Everybody loves the pump. Arnold famously talked about the pump and compared it to the climax you have with intercourse uh, with a partner or even by yourself. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm in heaven. That's how much he prized the pump. But all of you fitness fanatic love the pump. So we did this episode talking about the ways you can hack your pump. Maximize the muscle building, fluid bursting, amazing muscle feeling you get when you work out in the gym. So you'll love this particular episode. By the way, here's the giveaway for today's podcast. Free access to MAPS Anabolic. By the way, phase three of MAPS Anabolic is all about the pump. So if you like the pump, just wait till you get to phase three and you'll explode out of your shirts. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, here's how you get free access to MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Anabolic. Also, this is the last day for the MAPS Anabolic No BS Six Pack Formula sale. So both programs right now bundled and discounted tremendously. Get them both for $59.99. That's over $100 off the normal price. It's the last day, so you have to act now, otherwise the sale will be over and you can't do this anymore. If you're interested, head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. I got one for you. What you got? All things pump. Mm. Mm. What do like you mean? All, all, all things, okay, that uh, contribute to the most massive pump that oh. you can have in a workout. How to hack your pump. I, I like- The filthiest pump possible. I like this conversation because- um, I mean, I mean, as a young kid, when I first started lifting, uh, that was like one of the first, you know, most amazing feelings to feel all aired up and look like you grew two sizes and to feel your muscles stretch yes. that way. And a uh, very addicting feeling for somebody who's just getting into working out and, and feeling that for the first time. And then for the rest of my lifting career, I, I sought out ways to enhance that and along the way learned a, a lot of different things that can um, promote the pump. And I think we should share some of the stuff that we've learned over our you know two, two decades plus of lifting weights. It, it, it can't be overstated what you're saying in the sense that it's an enjoyable feeling. Now, some people are like, well, does it contribute to muscle gain and performance? We'll get to that in a second. But even if it didn't, right? Does the enjoyment of the workout contribute to performance, muscle building, fat loss, consistency? Of course it does because you enjoy it and you love it. Remember Arnold's famous quote from Pumping Iron about, <laughs> yeah. about the pump, right? Yeah. It's, it does. It feels great, especially when it's a muscle group that you're trying to develop and now you can see what it looks like being more developed. It's fuller. It's this great feeling. That also being That being said, also – there are muscle building benefits to getting the pump. It's been proven. And your ability to get a pump also is a great environment for muscle building. So just the ability to get a pump oftentimes means that things are in place that are optimal that will help your body to build muscle. So the pump is, is a good thing. And there's a reason why bodybuilders and muscle builders seek it out and you know praise it so much. It's got a lot of value. Yeah. So- Let's talk with the first thing, the first, and, and I would argue most important thing, and actually the one that took me the longest to figure out. I was going to say, you put this as the first one, but I almost didn't want to talk about it as the first one because it was actually one of the last ones totally. that I pieced together, and mm -hmm. arguably the most important one. Mm -hmm. Like that, when this one came together for me, I was like, oh my God, this actually makes a bigger difference than almost any other factor that I had figured out over the previous 20 years. Which totally. is funny because it's like fluid related. And right. so you'd, th you'd think you'd associate it. But yeah, I'm with you. I would have never really thought that water had such a big uh, contribution. Well, to I mean, a, a majority of what goes into your muscle yeah. when it gets pumped up is fluid. There Actually, 70 something percent of the overall size of your muscle is fluid. Does that mean that your muscles will shrink in size and the way they feel if you're dehydrated? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Does it mean your muscles will feel fuller and bigger if you're more hydrated? Absolutely. I didn't piece this together because I thought it was all about supplements and the workout itself. And I remember- yeah. Nitrous oxide. Bro, it literally, I was in my 30s when I figured this out. When it I realized, oh, if I drink a half a gallon of water during the day leading up to my workout and then I have a workout, the pump was for like, it was like 25% better than if I didn't do that. So I figured this out when I was competing because, and it was only because that was the first time in my life I really tracked water. I mean, oh. I never tracked water uh, like I did uh, for getting ready for a show. 
And, you know, exactly what you said is that I would have like, you know, a gallon or a gallon and a half goal for the day that I needed it to uh, hit. And what I real quickly realized was if I was going to hit a gallon or more of water in a day, I had to get ahead of that early. Mm -hmm. And so I used to have like this goal of, oh, can I get a half gallon down before I go hit my workout at noon or whatever time I was lifting? And I started to notice I was getting these massive pumps. And I noticed that it had, it was a direct correlation with the days that I really pushed the water intake leading into the workout and during the workout, right? So the goal became half a gallon leading up to the workout and then another like quarter gallon while I'm yes. working out. And I would, it felt like I grew two sizes and they were the most massive pumps that I ever had in my life. Yeah. So for me, it was when I started working out uh, first thing in the morning. So I was in my 30s when that really became a thing. And it's because of kids and all that stuff and my work. And so I had to work out first thing to get it done. And because it was first thing in the morning, I it's like you don't wake up and have a bunch of water. You know, you wake up, maybe have a little bit of water and then go work out. And I remember I was I was drinking this pre-workout and I'd mix it in this big cup of water. And then I had some other supplements that required water. And I noticed when I did that, I got a better pump. And then I started to piece together it has more to do with the water than anything else. And so what I would do when I wake up, and this is what I do now. So I still work out early in the morning. I was in here this morning at like 7, uh, it was like 7.30 this morning working out. I wake up in the morning and I have at least three glasses of water, at least leading into the workout. And then during the workout, I have a big shaker cup filled with water that I drink throughout. And sometimes that plus another half of that into the workout. Huge difference, just mm -hmm. water alone. Huge difference. Yeah, but one of the things that you add to water, which is like your is the second point, is the element T, right? Sodium. Yeah. This this is huge. Now, here's where I figured this out. When you go low carb or keto, one of the I guess negative side effects is you just don't get as good of a pump. Yeah, you don't feel the same kind of a pump you did before. Yes. At now, all. I, one yeah. of the things I hated about keto was how flat. I felt and depleted. Yes. I felt in my workouts. It was one of the more discouraging things about running that diet. Sure, you lean out on it pretty well because right. it keeps your calories pretty low, eating all basically protein or fat. But man, did the the pumps suck? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's psychologically deflating, right? Yeah. Too. So it's you know that's another factor to consider as you're going into like a different phase of training. Like, how can I uh, keep you know motivated, stimulated through this process? Yeah. So I remember you know I, I was reading about how oftentimes, so obviously when you cut carbs completely from your diet, because you're cutting carbs initially, you'll lose weight, and the initial weight loss is water, uh, and what comes out with that water is sodium. Your body sucks out some electrolytes. This is why sometimes people will feel, they'll go that keto flu, they'll call it, or they'll get cramps uh, from going keto because their, their electrolytes are off. So people in the keto community have known for a long time that you need more sodium, a lot more sodium when you're going keto. We started working with LMNT um, and they make an electrolyte powder that has appropriate levels of sodium. So all the other electrolyte powders are they don't have enough sodium to really make a difference, and that's because sodium's got this kind of, you know, negative, uh, you know, connotation or stigma, which is totally overblown. Um, in fact, it's false uh, for most people. So I threw in Element T. I had some before, had some during. Whoa, what a difference! Sodium is a big key with the water to give you that pump. So if you're going to drink water beforehand, throw in some electrolytes or some salt. And then watch the watch your muscles inflate as you work out. What and what is it about that? Is it because I, I know with carbohydrates, which is the next point, but it, it pairs with that, right? The water actually pairs with what's happening with the sodium. It's it, it keep your it'll keep the water in your body. So you're less what, likely to get rid of it right, right. from doing that. And you also need look, you also need those electrolytes for cell functioning and muscle firing. So like uh, and this is an extreme example, but uh, there have been deaths in bodybuilding in professional bodybuilding from athletes using diuretics mm. or cutting sodium. And it's like their, their, their heart can't function their bodies. Either there's two things that will happen. Either they'll go limp and they can't activate anything and they'll die or muscles will seize up. I think it was 19, I want to say 1994 Arnold classic, Paul mm. Dillett, one of the biggest bodybuilders of all time seized up on stage literally so scary and they had to carry him off stage and they said that he was like as stiff yeah. as, as a board i've seen that happen to somebody that just started locking and it was like this overall body cramp that happened like the yeah. entire body was just sort of uh contracting and convulsing why is it when i when i load sodium like that where i push it with either element t or in my diet why is it too i i, I tend to notice a difference in energy in the workouts yep. too because because it's an important signaler 
for all your cellular function. Okay. So if it's low, you're not able to, your body's just not able to function optimally. Like sodium is essential uh, for health. Um, and function, and so especially you know here's the thing. So it's kind of like a two pronged benefit that's happening here. Is like not totally. only not only is your body going to hold on to more water, that's going to push the pumps, but you're also going to have better energy, which is totally. probably going to push you to get a better. Plus, pump someone too. like you, especially when you were competing, you had no processed food in your diet, right? And even if you salt your food. Still low. It's low. Yeah. You're sweating. You're working out. I used to have to have uh, big old kosher dill pickles. I'd have like two of them a day. Yeah, because you needed the, the sodium. Yeah, this was obviously well before we knew LMNT. I would have done something easier like that, but I had to eat I'd eat two pickles a day when I was getting ready for a show. I'm sure it monitors too. Like, you know, with athletes, how you, you know your core temperature raises substantially, you know, when you're a bit dehydrated, but like keeping that, you know, water, uh, you know, being able to retain that water, you know, would help with the cooling process. Yeah, and I used to, when I, my endurance athletes, uh, I would have them put a pinch of sea salt in their uh, in their water, and they'd have improved performance. And it's because of the the past, you know, kind of poor information that we've been told. And so mm -hmm. here you are, you're a healthy person, you value your fitness and your health, and you're reading or hearing from mainstream health advice low sodium. So you're doing low sodium, not eating processed food, trying to be healthy, plus working out like crazy. Bad combination. So, and I mean, there were st there, there were early studies done out of uh, Florida University, I think it was, the University of Florida. That's where Gatorade come from, came from, mm -hmm. was they did studies on, on their football players. It was so hot and humid. By the way, original Gatorade had way more sodium than it does now. Oh, really? And yeah. they found that when they gave the athletes Gatorade, which was really an electrolyte, you know, drink full of like lots of it sodium, was just a powder with like a, like really high sodium. Content. Yeah, they had great performance. That's oh, where it, that's where it originally. I was. wonder why they they eliminated that. Then. No, they, it's mainstream. They want to yeah. make it taste good because and oh, also wow, because so well, crazy. sodium tastes good. Here's the thing: it tastes good, right. right? But the problem was we get all this messaging about sodium being bad. right. I bet. I mean, Gatorade was around coming around the same time. The whole like salt is bad for you. Type yes. Too. So yeah. how interesting is that? Like they they lessened their their product, you know, or made to it- To make it commercial. Right, to make mm -hmm. it more commercial, even though it was probably more effective with the original formula. Yep, That's yep, really interesting yeah. to me. All right, so let's talk about carbs, right? Um, carbohydrates do make a huge difference when it comes to the pump. I've noticed that I need to have carbs at least a couple hours before I work out, or when I work out early in the morning, carbs with dinner. So I have carbs with dinner, then I'm storing some of that glycogen, then I go work out and I get better pumps. So this was another one that was new to me that I really uh, figured out uh, back when I was competing because I was measuring and weighing stuff. Um, and I actually had this like down to the gram. I knew exactly what was the optimal. Yeah, you said you needed two meals before So training? Yeah, so basically my meals were about 50 to 70 grams of carbohydrates in a meal. So, and really what it was was the number of carbohydrates is what I needed. Oh. So I needed somewhere between 150 to 200 grams of carbohydrates going into a workout. Now, ideally I would get one or two meals and then I would get another, you know, 30 to 50 grams mm -hmm. of, of carbohydrates before I went into the workout and I would end up just getting these massive pumps. And what I noticed was anything beyond that, I didn't get any more benefits from it. Oh, I see. So, and, and the, the beginning threshold was like 25 to 30. I could know, I noticed a difference in the pumps and hanging on to water at about 25 to 30 grams. And then it got better at 50. It got better at 70. It got better all the way to about 150 range, right? Like that's where it started to really peak anything kind of beyond that 200 250 300 if i slam that I mean, no, it would actually start to have an adverse effect almost i'd feel lethargic mm -hmm. or i didn't feel like i got a better pump from it so i had it down like to the gram of what i would have i'd have that half a gallon of of water i'd have that 75 to 150 grams of carbohydrates ahead of time so a, b before two hours before mm -hmm. i go into the workout and then i would train and i remember when i was like you know, reading up on like, okay, how does carbohydrates work with water and, and what exactly is happening? And I remember reading that it was for every three grams of carbohydrates you intake, your body holds on to three ounces of water. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, think about that. This is also what helped me like coach clients that were just weight loss clients that would get frustrated with the scale maintaining or going up or going down. And I would explain this to them when I figured that out. Like, well, think about this. Like if yesterday you had 50 more grams of carbs than you normally would do and you had four glasses more of water, 
and put that many ounces, do the math of what I just said, right? The, the three grams to three ounces, how many ounces of water is that, that your body's holding, put that on a scale and, and see what it weighs. There's your few pounds of water. Yeah. Weight there's your, there's your two pounds right there of, of just water, just from that one simple thing. And then of course, sodium and other factors play a role, right? So, um, that it blew my mind what it did for me pumps. And that was the main reason why I was reading up on it, but it actually even helped me as a coach communicate that to my clients that couldn't understand why Adam, I followed the diet, exactly what you said. And I, we train and we exercise, but yet the scale went up or down mm. too many pounds. And I would explain to them how the body holds on to water and that could play a massive role in the difference of one or two pounds up or down. Now, I mm -hmm. did notice a difference between carbohydrate sources, mainly because some carbohydrate sources for me are easier to digest than others. The best source of carbs for me for a pump was rice. white rice. Mine too. Yeah, white rice. I would try bread and pasta and you know sugar and you know fruit juice and- no, it was the, the 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 white rice. Just it was the best for the. I pump. I actually had this all the way. So uh, sweet potatoes weren't fast enough. So I I would eat the same amount of grams. So we're talking about the the yeah. seventy five to one fifty. If I did that in sweet potatoes, um, the time for it to get in my system and get the full benefits from it was just slower. It just did not. I didn't get the same. If I did that with all white rice, I I felt it. I felt so much faster. Very interesting. And this helped me with like when I was well, like getting on stage. That's right, getting on stage, and I wanted to have the optimal full look. I couldn't diet, and I and what I messed up was one of my shows. I did all uh, sweet potatoes as my carbs for the that that uh, um, what's it my Prep. my week no the final week oh, my, oh, my, oh, I think yeah, in yeah, my. Yeah. Peak week. Peak oh my week. God. She's been so long, huh? <laughs> <laughs> my, my peak week, I, I decided one show, I would do all sweet potatoes as my main source of carbohydrates. And I could never keep uh, the pump. I couldn't stay in, uh, in like filled out. Like I would get just for a minute, I get it. And then I would deflate back down where the rice kept me pumped up. It was interesting. really interesting to feel that. And then got going forward, I never did a peak week with uh, sweet potatoes anymore. I always did it either with white potatoes or with white rice. I always notice a bigger difference. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So this next one, uh, I figured out not because of the good pump, but rather what happened when this didn't happen, the terrible pump I would get, which is uh, get good sleep. Or in other words, if you get crappy sleep, you can expect to get no pumps the next day. Now, what's is is there a, a form of dehydration that's happening here? Like when because you, you're not sleeping very well, or, hor hormones. or hormonally, yeah. what's going on? I like think it's all the stress hormones. Your body's in this kind of elevated fight or flight, you know, situation. Yeah, you know, blood flow is probably more restricted, mm. and it's just when I get bad sleep, and that, well, first off, the performance is worse. Yeah. Also, I'm not as strong. But then the pumps are like gone. I'm just flat. And I've done this so many times. I know bad sleep the next day, forget it. This workout's not going to feel nearly as fun. I'm not going to get great pumps from yeah, it. Yeah, that's why it's cool to see both of these as metrics as something that you can, if you're doing things correctly, if like everything's lined up for you, you'll have strength and you'll have, you know, good pumps and everything in the gym. If that doesn't happen, you got to really go back and assess, like if you're not getting sleep or if you're not recovering properly, you know, it's going to affect everything else you're doing performance wise. So I always knew this. I just didn't quite understand what the mechanism was that was causing it to be that way. I mean, it was just, I just attributed to oh shitty sleep and so it's a terrible workout. Yeah. But I always felt that way. I never felt like I could get a really good pump if I had a really terrible night of sleep. Yeah, and and, and some keys to this are to. Tr By the way, sleep is extremely important. I mean, with poor sleep, you can forget about your healthy diet and workout. Like poor sleep is gonna just mess you up. But the best way to 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 get and ensure good sleep is to prepare for your sleep and tr and be serious about it. So what I mean by that is, if you are a fitness fanatic. You probably treat your workouts uh, like they're sacred. In other words, an hour before my workout, I'm mentally thinking about it. 40 minutes before I have my caffeine or my coffee or my pre workout, I do my warm up. I know what my routine is. I know what exercises I'm going to do. So you're like, you're, you're ready, you're prepared. Your workout starts at this time and then you do it. But we expect us ourselves to just go to sleep and don't treat it that way. If you, if you prepare for sleep an hour or two before, dimming the lights, wearing blue light blocking glasses, not eating foods that tend to cause issues for you before you go to bed, maybe having not having stressful conversations right before bed. Like if you treat it as sacred, then your sleep is you're far more guaranteed to have good sleep. Now let let's uh um let's say that I didn't get good sleep. 
and it, I'm going to go work out. Is there something that you would recommend either like supplement wise, like maybe like a, uh, either a mushroom or ashwagandha or maybe the infrared sauna? Is there something that I could do if I know I got shitty sleep, but I also want to get a good workout and get a good pump here and, 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 or is things like a pre-workout going to be kind of counterproductive because I'm already like, yeah, not in not the short term. It's probably not. Um, so if it's like one night of bad sleep, you know, you're, you're, then a stimulant has got lots of value. Okay. It, do, it does improve wakefulness and response time and performance. If it's chronic poor sleep, like you could band aid it all you want. Yeah, no, that's not. I'm, I'm, I'm saying let's like the, the one off. Yeah, it's one off, and I don't want to miss my workout yeah. and, and take the day off, so I'm going to do it anyway. Stimulants. So a stimulant to do that. Yeah. What I mean, I remember. Um, Ben Greenfield talking about uh, the infrared sauna to reset your circadian rhythm. Yeah, I didn't try that. I know you did. You I have, and I've, I've, you know, and like again, I, I, I can't explain uh, the mechanism very well, but I understand. I did apply it, and I noticed it, and I still do this now. Like if I if we fly somewhere where we're, where there's a time mm -hmm. time change, or we've been grinding work wise and just not getting good sleep, one of the things I'll do is I'll go sit in that sauna for 20, 20 30 minutes. And dude, it it does. I feel complete. I feel it almost feels like my body got some sleep. And I do, I'm obviously not sleeping. I'm sitting in a sauna. And I remember him explaining that to me. That's like one of his like every time he travels, especially when the, the time zone change, right? He will find a infrared sauna in the town somewhere, and he'll go do it right away. And I, after he gave that advice, I started to try it myself. And I, I noticed a big difference from it. So, I have yet to try it, but uh, it sounds very interesting. Yeah, you need to, especially since you've had some messed up sleep lately. It'd be, oh, I'd be curious to hear what you think after having a, one of those nights where you don't sleep all night and you're about to work out. Try hitting the sauna first, which is something you probably mm -hmm. wouldn't normally do, and see if you notice a difference going into the workout. Interesting. That way. I, th I think I will. All right, yeah. here's the next one. And this one's more common knowledge, I think, than, than the other ones, which is higher reps. Higher reps do have a tendency to give you a better pump. Lower reps, especially really low reps, one of the downfalls of low reps, not that they don't build muscle, but rather people really enjoy the pumps. And when they're doing sets of three and four, they tend not to get them. Like you get the reps up to 15 and with good form, uh, you're you're going to get more of a pump doing that than than the lower reps. And that's, sure. uh, I mean, it's, this is because pretty obvious, right? I mean, you're just more, pumping, more blood, more, blood, blood, blood. more oxygen. <laughs> moving fluid more, over there. More fluid is yeah. being pumped into there. Therefore, you're going to have a, a greater pump. Right? Do you guys have a rep range that's like the best for the pump for you? I mean, if I mean anything 15 yeah, or above, 15, dude. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. start, it's once I start hitting, yeah, anything over 12, Definitely, but even 15, 20 supersets. I mean, you start yes, super set. pushing that or blood occlusion where you're doing the 20s. Like, yeah, those, I mean, I get a massive pump. Yeah, for me, me, it's like 12 to 15, 20 sometimes. But if I go too high, sometimes I don't get that effect. I need to have at least some resistance. But yeah, that 12 to 15 for me is great. The other thing, in and, and this isn't on our, our list, but in relation to that, uh, the other option is uh, slowing it way down. So so it's the same time under that's tension. That's right. Yeah. So I could actually do five reps and get a massive pump if the five reps take the same amount of time as the 15 reps yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Good if, point. let's say like I'm doing bicep curls and 15 reps takes a total of, let's say, 30 seconds to complete the set. If I did five five reps and I made it take 30 seconds to get to those five reps, I'll have just as much of a pump. Yeah. Six seconds each rep, right? Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So that's uh, also, I think, uh, valuable to use that as a tool. So if not only just including high rep ranges, but also slowing down the tempo yeah. when you're doing lower reps. Yeah. And then uh, right along with that is the shorter rest periods. Now there's a, there's a bit of a diminishing return if there's no rest periods. If you're doing like circuit style training, mm -hmm. forget the pump. You're not going to get it. Now you're training more for endurance. But shorter rest periods, probably around the 30, 45 second range where you're still doing, you're still resting in between sets, but it's short. Boy, does that produce crazy pumps. And I, I remember really putting this together for myself when I would have a time crunch for workouts. So, you know, especially back in the day when I would manage gyms, I used to always like to work out during the slowest time of the day, which was in the middle of the day, right? So when, you know, big box gyms, you know, morning you have your, your rush and then you definitely have your rush uh, in the evening. So I used to like to work out right around noon was the time I'd like to work out. The problem was sometimes I'd get a call, 
my district manager's on the phone, or there's a meeting, or on the way to my workout, an employee asked me a question, so now I take 20 minutes helping them out. Oh, now my hour workout, I need to complete in 30 minutes. So what I would do is I would shorten the rest period, and oftentimes those became my best workouts because I, I did such short rest periods that I'd get this crazy massive pump. This is what you'll notice in like phase three of our of a lot of our MAPS programs, like MAPS Anabolic, you know, supersets and short rest periods. The goal of that phase is to maximize the pump, and a lot of it has to do with the short rest periods. Yeah. The other thing is uh, the the full range of motion, right? The full range of motion, the squeeze at the top, the pause at the bottom. Oh, dude. Like, I, I, I remember, and you, you t we talk about like mostly high reps it takes, right, to get that good pump, but shoot, uh, full range of motion squats for five or six reps will even pump me up oh, because yeah, there yeah. it's such a, a lot of time under tension because of how, how long the movement is. Right. Um, and if you do it with a slow controlled tempo, I'll, I'll get a massive pump even from that. Yeah, yeah you're expressing like, like each component of the muscle too and it's stretched position so now you have more opportunity to, to pump blood you know throughout the muscle like pretty effectively yeah if i if i do like a, let's say i pick two or three exercises for a body part and the goal is to get a really good pump i'll pick one where the squeeze is really important and i'll pick one where the stretch is really important for example a, a, a fly with dumbbells you don't get much of a squeeze at the top right because you're not oppo directly opposing gravity but the stretch can be real intense. So I'll focus really heavily on the yeah. stretch. Yeah. And then maybe I'll do an exercise where it's a squeeze, like a cable crossover, yeah. for example, or for biceps. Spider uh, curls and then preacher curls. Yeah, right? Yeah. And I, if I, if when I focus on the stretch and the squeeze and really get that range of motion, oh my God. And if you really want to take pair those superset mm -hmm. yeah that's mm -hmm. the best yeah. i like to go from the the stretch to the squeeze yes often if you do, do if you pair those together you want a massive pump so, yeah in yeah. fact i did one for triceps today i did behind the neck overhead extensions which is a tricep stretch and then i went to a tricep press down which is a squeeze yeah and it's like that combination just gives just fills the the muscles uh, and it, what it is, I, it is right it's just that we're taking it through we're we're emphasizing the the both end ranges of motion mm -hmm. of that of that muscle uh, and both those exercises, so you're just maximizing the yes. amount of, of fluid being sent there. Now, last, uh, and this is last for a reason, is supplements. Now, the reason why it's last for a reason is all this other stuff that we said leading up, up to this, way more important. will make way bigger of a difference in terms of whether or not you get a pump. That being said, supplements can make a little bit of a difference. And mostly the way that they make the difference is by increasing vasodilation, so by improving your your capillary's ability to relax and open, and by improving blood flow, okay? So when you improve blood flow and blood ves vessels are nice and relaxed and open, the ability to fill up with more blood and get a better pump uh, is, is improved. Very few supplements actually deliver on this. I remember back in the day, the first pump because you know you got to understand like obviously i've been doing this for so long i remember when when there were no supplements that supposedly improved the pump there was no category of supplements mm -hmm. that did this and then i remember when they first hit the market which and it was by the way it was brilliant because and I don't, i'm surprised nobody hit on this before obviously one of the things that people enjoy the most about workouts is a pump if you could sell a supplement that promised to give people a better pump you're going to sell a lot of your product and to take it a step further, if as part of your marketing, you show a before and after picture, not of a 30-day transformation, but a before and after the workout pump, yeah. which let me tell you something right now. If you do all the steps that I said that we said in this episode. Yeah, with the water, the carbs, and, the sodium. And you're lean. You have a crazy yeah. difference. And you're not like overweight. You're a lean person, so you can see the muscle. The before and after is dramatic. I mean, I post pictures on Instagram sometimes of me after my workout. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't all look like time. that when I'm not pumped. I look <laughs> like I gained 30 pounds of muscle because of the pump. So it's really brilliant marketing. I remember when it first came out, and what they promoted was, uh, one of the main things that they promoted was the amino acid arginine. Arginine is utilized by the body to turn into nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is this, this compound in the body that causes blood vessels to relax. By the way, the, 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 your you know, erectile dysfunction drugs like Viagra, um, Cialis, the way that they work is they inhibit an enzyme that breaks down nitric oxide. So what they do essentially is they imp increase nitric oxide and boom, you get you know, more erections or, or better quality erections or whatever. Well, anyway, Arginine is in the, using the process of making nitric oxide. Here's the problem. Arginine is destroyed in the gut 
when you consume it. So very little has gone has gone to the, the in, into the blood to contribute to nitric oxide. The studies that were done on arginine were done through intravenous you know injection. Nonetheless, that's how they sold the products. Well, later on they figured out if you use citrulline, that gets converted to arginine. You actually get more arginine in the blood through consuming citrulline than you do through arginine. And studies confirm this. If you use citrulline, which now is what you're going to see in all your pro-pump supplements, you're going to get a higher boost of nitric oxide. So that's the first supplement that'll help. So does that mean that. that Viagra and Cialis don't do anything? Because I remember when I was a kid that you would see Viagra pills on the floor. Inside. Oh, no, they do. Okay, so Oh, they yeah, they, because they, they inhibit, it's, a, it's called a PDE5 inhibitor. So it's, it inhibits the enzyme that breaks down nitric oxide. The result being way more nitric oxide okay. in your blood. So oh, you yeah. could, so they it could affect you getting a pump. You just might have a bone or two when you're doing a bench press, right? <laughs> if like, your workout turns you on, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your your arms will be pumped, but so will yeah. your dick. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, see, and, and you're talking about like supplements that hit the market, like addressing this. I just remember all the ones like just emphasizing the nitrous oxide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. This, and no explode, all this kind of stuff. But it wasn't like talking about now like citrulline and all these that like uh, then contribute towards yes. elevated nitrous oxide. Now, even though we didn't order this. We left supplements last, which I'm glad we did, because if if you're on a budget, I highly recommend you go through all the things that are free that we said. Like you could literally and do- they make a bigger impact. Yeah, that exactly. Yes. So go do all that because I know the, the the quick thing everybody wants to do is go spend the thirty to fifty bucks on the supplement. No, if but your the, sodium is off, your water intake is low, you're not eating carbs, you're getting bad sleep, you know any of those things, and then you take a bunch of citrulline, you ain't gonna get a pump. Yeah, it's and you make that and you get a much better pump if you do all those other things and not take that. Correct. So go do all that stuff first. So so let's now let's say you did all those things, and now I'm also in addition interested in the, yes. all the supplements that we've mentioned and talked about. How would you order them, including the sodium LMNT? Okay, so we've talked about LMNT. I, I mentioned ashwagandha stuff. We talked about pre workout. We've talked about creatine. We've talked about beetroot, citrulline. Uh, if you were to order in uh, order these in priority of what would be the best most important yeah most important how would you order those you know i think pump? i think it's pretty much what we did except maybe put sleep at the top because i think if you have bad sleep everything's screwed well you know no, no. We're, we're pretending that's all and that's in order oh i see yeah, everything's in order now i'm also wanting to put supplements oh, so i'm doing good sleep i'm what doing the supplements carbohydrates are listed first yes okay so if, and we've mentioned all these supplements right now so 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 citrulline is the most popular about three to six grams uh, pre workout, but that's not better than creatine, though. No, a creatine is going to give you. I mean, if you if you've never taken creatine, you're going to get way better pumps from creatine. Yeah, I would put that at the top. I creatine was uh, so I, I did a video a long. This is a long time way before Mind Pump, and I first started my YouTube channel. I, I gave it as a hack for uh, ectomorph guys that are leaning out. Right, so one of the things that I would always be discouraged about when I was cutting was I'm already kind of a, I'm an ectomorph body type, so I have a small bone structure. And when I go to lean out, I just, it, my clothes hang on me. I look like, and even, even underneath, if I'm all shredded and diced up, I just don't look that way because of my bone structure. Mm -hmm. If I look lean, I look skinny. And, mm -hmm. the, and it would, of course, fuck with my head because that was my insecurity uh, as a kid. So one of the hacks was I actually wouldn't take creatine for most of my training cycle until the cut. Oh, so you could feel the offset. That's right. Offset, and, yeah. and so then on the cut, I would bump carb the carbohydrate up uh, before the workout. I would increase the water intake, and then I would take creatine. That was kind of like my triple threat to kind of fill me out a little more while I was training to kind of – psychologically yeah. trick myself into thinking that I'm not shrinking even yeah. though I'm not. If you're not taking creatine, you take creatine, you'll get better pumps. Okay, like, so creatine's number one. Number one. According to the studies, to boost nitric oxide, it's still not citrulline. The next one would be like beetroot powder or another often lots of people aren't familiar with the supplement, pycnogenol. Uh, I think this is pine like uh, French maritime pine bark extract or something like that. Maybe Doug could look it up. But it 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 it, it will boost nitric oxide Pretty significantly according oh, interesting. to studies. You mm. don't see it very often in supplements, probably because it's expensive uh, and or it tastes like crap. I think if you put pycnogenol in powder form and mix up your drink, it probably wouldn't taste very good. Oh, really? But it does work pretty well. Beetroot powder works very well. Studies show it improves. So you would you put beetroot above citrus? I would. Wow, I which would. actually that makes sense why I like the Organifi Red Juice yep. so much because it's I got actually, it in there. Yeah, I yep. actually get a good little pump from that, yep. taking that before. Yeah. So beetroot above that. Okay, so creatine, 
beetroot. What, what about LMNT sodium? Where would you put sodium in Oh, this? well, sodium's above all of that. I mean, sodium's up there with the creatine. If your sodium's low, forget right. about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. then you would actually put arguably sodium up with, there. Higher than creatine. It's okay. essential. Creatine's okay. not, I mean, creatine is not essential so long as you're eating enough protein. That doesn't mean you don't benefit from supplementing it, but it's not essential. Sodium is essential. And if your sodium isn't, isn't optimal, you're going to feel like Okay, crap. so sodium, creatine, uh, um, beetroot, beetroot, nogenol, um, and then I'd go. Then, then you're, you know, then you're looking at uh, citrulline, citrulline yeah, or something. something like that. Yeah, okay, absolutely. And you can buy all these individually, or you could take a pre workout that might have a lot of these. Pre workouts also include things like beta alanine. That doesn't really improve the pump, but it does improve performance or at least stamina and endurance. Yeah. It also gives you the itchy, tingly, yeah. tingly feeling that. You I think that's the main thing that you that, don't like. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some people love it because they can feel it. You know, say, oh, it must be working. I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy it. It's like the shampoo that tingles your scalp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 totally. Yeah. So, there, so there you have it. I mean, if you want to hack the pump, and I know there's people watching right now that are super into their workouts. Try just schedule all this stuff together. Plan it all out. Work it all yeah, out. Yeah, start with the free stuff, and then if you want to pile on yeah, that, and then the let us know what happens. And I'm pretty sure the vast majority of you are going to be tripped out over how good your pump is. Mind Look, pumps if, crazy pump. If you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. They can help you with all of your fitness goals. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin can be found at Mind Pump Justin. I am at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Hey, look, if you like that whole episode, click right here for shorter clips where we talk about specific topics. You'll love it. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed our content and you want more.